Hi, welcome to this video. I welcome you all to my channel all about mechanical engineering. For today's video, the topic of discussion is basics of thermodynamics. In the previous video, we have discussed introduction to thermodynamics from where this term came and the history about it. Now in today's video, we'll understand the basic terms which are used in thermodynamics. Which are those terms? The terms like system, surrounding, boundary, universe, thermodynamic system, thermodynamic properties, types of systems and properties of the systems. This will be discussed in today's video. So let us start. What is a system? Consider this area which we have here enclosed by this barrier and this region which is to be studied is called as system. So as per definition, the portion of universe which is under consideration and whose properties are to be studied is called as system. The second term comes into picture is boundary. So this barrier which is separating our area of interest from the remaining universe is called as boundary. So as per definition, the real or imaginary barrier which separates a system from surrounding is called as boundary. It may be noted that boundary may be real or imaginary. And sometimes your system may have real as well as imaginary boundary. How it is possible we understand with examples used in types of systems. Now the portion of universe other than the system is called as surrounding means except my system whatever is present in the universe that everything is called as surrounding. Thermodynamic system. So definition of a thermodynamic system is somewhat different from system. In a system we have defined the portion of universe which is under consideration and whose properties are to be studied. Whereas in Thermodynamic system, the definition is the portion of universe which is under consideration whose thermodynamic properties are to be studied is called as thermodynamic system. Now, what are those thermodynamic properties? The properties of the system like pressure, temperature, mass, density, volume, enthalpy, entropy, internal energy, etc. are called as thermodynamic properties. So, if you are interested in studying these properties of a system, then you have a thermodynamic system. Now, coming to types of systems. Basically, we have three types of systems. The first one is open system. As per definition, the system in which there is mass as well as energy interactions with the surroundings is called as open system. Example, heating water in an open container. Suppose you have an open container and you have certain amount of water in it and you are trying to heat it. So this burner is present in the surroundings and walls of this container is boundary of your system and the water present in your system is your working substance. So you are supplying heat to your system means heat is transferred from surrounding to the system. So there is energy interaction. Now once you have 100 degrees Celsius achieved at your water, then your water starts boiling and at that time you have phase change process means your water starts changing from liquid to gaseous state that is steam. And it starts evaporating and will leave the container and will come out of this container will get to the surrounding. Means over a period of time, if I constantly heat this system, I'll get a decreased amount of water after a period of time. Means mass is also leaving my system and getting into the surrounding. Means there is a mass interaction between system and surrounding as well as there is energy interaction between system and surrounding. This type of system is called as open system. Coming to the second type, Closed system. The system in which there is only energy interaction with the surrounding and mass of the system remains constant is called as closed system. Example, heating water in a closed container. Now I have taken the same example but with a small difference in order to have a better understanding. 
I have the same container but the difference is I have it covered with a lid. Now I am still heating it but here heat interaction is available as you can see mass interaction is not available. How? Because heat is supplied by the burner in our case 1 also it was supplied in our case 2 also it is supplied but in case 1 the container was open so once you have a boiling point attained your water starts evaporating and may leave container due to absence of lead but in this you have a lead present so whatever amount of water you are having inside cannot leave your system so during the complete process you have mass as constant so here you have energy interaction heat is transferred but mass interaction is zero and that's how we have a closed system only energy interaction is possible mass of the system remains constant the third type of system is isolated system the system in which there is neither mass nor energy interaction with the surroundings is called as isolated system example thermos flask Consider you have a thermos flask and you have stored something at a greater temperature than surrounding in it. Example, you have 70 degree Celsius coffee contained in this thermos flask. Now, you are not adding any heat, you are not heating this thermos flask. So, there is no energy interaction and you are not having this as an open container. So, there is no question of having any evaporation. So in this case you don't have any energy interaction and you even don't have any mass interaction. So this type of system is called as isolated system. Now properties of system. In order to understand various properties of a system, let us take an example. Consider you have an open container having certain amount of water in it this container is open to atmosphere means the amount of pressure acting on this surface of water is atmospheric pressure now let us define various properties such as mass let us consider mass as mkgs available in our system volume of our system equals to v meter cube pressure available equals to p newton per meter square that is pascal Density equals to rho kg per meter cube. Temperature of our system T degree Celsius. Weight of our system W Newton. Now, if I divide my system in two equal parts by inserting a vertical partition, naming the parts A and B, let us try to understand what happens to the various properties which we have defined earlier mass of part a mass of part b will be obviously half of original container that is m by 2 volume of part a volume of part b will be equal to half of original volume that is v by 2 pressure of part a and part b is remaining unchanged how the container is open to atmosphere and atmospheric pressure was acting on this surface of water even though after inserting this partition part A and part B are open to atmosphere though that's why here atmospheric pressure is acting on the surface of water of part A and part B so it is remaining unchanged now what happens to the density we all know as per density definition it is defined as mass per unit volume here mass and volume are changing by the same amount therefore their ratio is maintained constant that's why density of part A density of part B is remaining constant as the density of original container now comes to the temperature temperature of A temperature of B is again remaining constant how suppose you have some amount of coffee at say temperature 70 degree celsius and you have removed some amount of coffee from it what happens to the temperature of that coffee 
it is not going to decrease because of the amount you have taken out it is remaining constant so the temperature remains unaffected what about weight now we all know weight is given by mass into acceleration due to gravity that is m into g so obviously if i have decrease in mass weight should be changing so here weight of part a weight of part b is w by 2 that is half of original mass half of original weight now using this example we come to know that there are some properties which are independent of mass the properties of the system which are independent of mass are called as intensive properties or intrinsic properties examples of these properties are pressure temperature and density here density in both the cases is same temperature is same and pressure is also same so these are intrinsic properties or called as intensive properties whereas we can also see there are some properties which are changing with the change in mass the properties of the system which are dependent on mass or which are depending on mass are called as extensive properties or extrinsic properties examples of this are weight volume internal energy etc so these are examples of extrinsic properties here volume is labeled under extrinsic properties but what about specific volume let us try to understand specific properties of a system so properties such as specific volume and specific heat are they intrinsic or extrinsic in order to understand this you should know the definition of specific properties while defining specific properties they are always defined on unit mass basis that is for defining these properties mass is kept as 1 hence all specific properties are intensive properties example if you have to define specific volume then the definition says the amount of space occupied per unit mass means i am keeping mass as 1 so when you are keeping mass as 1 it is not changing so all these specific properties comes under intensive properties this was all about basics of thermodynamics hope you have enjoyed the session thank you for watching this video